Hello, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running quickly with .NET Nuke 7. So here we have a .NET Nuke 7 website that we've installed utilizing some of the previous videos you can find in the .NET Nuke video library. We've got the site here. We're not currently logged in. What I want to do is show you some of the basic features of .NET Nuke. We'll walk you through the process of logging into the website, take a look at some of the tools that are provided to you as an administrator. We'll also show you how you can go through and create a page and start to manage the content on the pages of your website. So when you install .NET 7 for the first time, you get the fictional brand Awesome Cycles. And this is their website. Across the top of the page, we've got a gray bar with a register and a login link, as well as a search box there in the top right-hand corner. We then have the brand's logo and the navigation for their website going across the top. After that, we start to get into the content for this particular home page, which we have a rotating banner here, rotating images. Beneath that, we have some additional HTML content being provided for the page. So let's go ahead and take a look at the site by logging in. So we're going to click on the login link, and when you log into a .NET Nuke website for the first time, you're most likely going to log in with what's known as the host account. This is a super user account that gets created during the installation process. We'll go ahead and click on login. That will then log us into the website. Now when you're logged in for the first time, you'll notice across the top of the page, above where we had the register and the login links previously, we now have what's known as the control panel within .NET Nuke. As you start to mouse over sections of the control panel, you'll see that we get drop-down menus that appear for us and allow us to start to interact with the page and the content for our website. Beneath that, where we once had the register and the login link, we now have information for the currently logged in user. We have notifications and message notifications, as well as the account and a logout option. The rest of the page remains the same at this point when you log into the website. Now, if we wanted to start maintaining the content on this page, we would need to go up into the top right hand corner in that control panel. And if we mouse over the edit page option, we have a menu that appears here. Now we can click on edit this page and that will take us into edit mode for the current page. As the page refreshes, we'll start to see down below that in the various content areas of the page, we start to see what are known as action menus. And we'll see with the number of the locations where we have content, we have three images or three action menus that appear. One for editing, one for getting into the settings and administrative features of a module, and then one for positioning or movement of content on a page. If we scroll down further, we'll see those three icons in a variety of locations on the page. Now those locations are what are known as panes. They are where we can place modules and place and edit content on the page. Within the control panel, underneath the admin menu, we'll find a number of common tools for administrators. Within that control panel, there are three tabs available, with the first being basic or common settings more advanced settings. And then the third option is actually a bookmark. It allows you to bookmark the common tools that you want to want to access on a frequent basis. You'll find the same thing under the host menu with common settings, advanced settings, and then bookmarks for the host options as well. Under the tools menu, you'll find the ability to upload files. And if you're a host or a super user, the ability to clear the cache, recycle the app pool, and even change websites. Under the help menu, you'll find an online help and a getting started option. And the getting started option will provide you some links to .netnuke.com for a variety of resources. If we want to add a module to the page, we would do that through the use of the modules menu in the control panel. And if we want to create a page, which is the first thing we're going to do, we would mouse over the pages menu in the control panel. Now we're going to choose that menu and we're going to click on the add page option. We're going to create a new page called community as part of this Awesome Cycles website. So we'll go ahead and give the page a name. Now from here there are a number of other page settings available to us such as title, description, and keywords. These all allow you to customize the page from a search engine optimization or SEO perspective. We're going to leave those empty for now. We can always come back and fill that information in later on. Now what we do want to do with the page is we want to set the permissions on this page. Now I'm using, utilizing .NET Nuke 7 Professional Edition, so I have an advanced permissions grid here that allows me to control who can view the page, who can add pages underneath of this page, who can place content on the page, and further granular options. If you're using the Community Edition of .NET Nuke, you would have a View and an Edit column. 
Now, if I want to make this page visible to anyone who visits our website, I need to check the All Users row under the View column. From there, we have an Advanced Settings tab that we can also configure permissions for. For now, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and click Add Page. Now we can see we have a new page created. It shows up in the menu of our website after Home and before the About Us page. And viewing the page right now, we see that the page is empty. If we go into the Edit menu up in the Control Panel and click on Edit This Page, what we'll find is there is actually an HTML module already on the page. It was placed on the page during that creation process. So from here, we could actually edit that module, or if we want, we can add additional modules to the page. Now I'm going to do that by mousing over the Modules menu, clicking on Add New Module, and then I'm going to scroll within the list of modules to find the HTML Pro module. I'm going to click on that module and drag the module down to this left pane. And as I drag the module around, I can see that I can place the module into a variety of panes on the page. When I let go of my mouse, that will then add the module into the pane. And we can see we have two modules currently on the page available to us based on these action menus. So if we'd like to edit the content for one of those modules, we'll mouse over the pencil and click on the Edit Content option. Now when we go into the HTML module, we're provided with an interface here in a modal pop-up window. Now up in the top right hand corner of that window, we have the ability to expand the window or minimize that window. We can also close the window. Now inside the window, we have a rich text editor which will provide us a Microsoft Word-like interface to be able to edit and manage the content on our website. I'm going to paste in some content created from a previous location and that comes in as a paragraph of content into the page. And we can also add in some images and other types of media. So I can mouse over the paper clip and choose the image manager option. That will load up a window here which will allow us to look for images that are available on our website. Now in addition to these images we can upload our own images if you have any images on your local computer. Instead of uploading for now I'm just going to choose an existing image out of the images folder. If I go ahead and click on insert, that will then insert the image into the page. Now one thing you might notice is within this editor, as I'm changing content, the text editor is actually automatically saving that content. Now it's saving it into a temporary location, it's not automatically publishing that content just yet. If we want, we can go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page, click on save, that will then save that content into the database and display that information here on the page. Now you'll notice that that image is rather large for the location where we actually placed the module. The content, the text in the module, doesn't stretch out the full width of the page, yet the image does. Well, that's due to the restriction in the size of the pane for the location where we placed the module. We can move the module to a different pane by mousing over the Move Action menu and choosing another pane available to us. If I move that to the content pane, it moves up higher on the page beneath the module with the title called Enter Title. Now in addition to editing the content for the modules, we can also get into the settings for the module by mousing over the gear icon and choosing Settings. And from here we can provide a title for the module. And I'll go ahead and provide a title of Welcome to the Awesome Cycles Community. If we go ahead and click on Update, that will then update the title for that module. Now we could edit the content of the module that's above that one, or we could simply delete it from the page, choosing from the gear menu and choosing the delete option. At this point, we've now configured the page with some content. It has some text as well as one graphic. If we go ahead and log out of the website, we can take a look at what the website looks like to someone who is not a host or a super user. The community page is available to us, and we now have some basic content on that page. Now hopefully this gets you started with .NET Nuke quickly. You can check out some additional videos we have in the .NET Nuke video library. You can find that under the resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. You should also be sure to check out the .NET Nuke training program additionally found under that resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.